My name is David Burkus. I facilitate the transfer of good ideas. So I teach uh, at the university level at Oral Roberts University, a book called The Myths of Creativity. And when I'm not in Tulsa teaching, I'm running all over the world. Mo actually, mostly I'm waiting in airport lounges to go all over and talk to people about the book and the ideas inside of it. The stories that we tell ourselves are true, even if they're not true. We tell ourselves a lot of different stories about how the world works. Most of them are, I use the term myths in the book, most of them are attempts to explain really complicated stuff based only on our experience. And so when you try and construct an entire worldview out of it, you end up having to fill in the gaps. And that stuff that you fill in the gaps with, it actually shapes how you perceive the world around you. So the stories that you tell yourself become true because in psychology we call it confirmation bias. You filter in things that support that story and you filter out things that don't. And over time all of that stuff becomes self-reinforcing. What you find a lot of times is people who have discounted their abilities or have discounted in this case their creative self or even just think, oh I am creative but I'm not creative like that amazing company and I wish I could be like that. Usually they're telling themselves a story that if you look at the people they put on a pedestal as presumably more creative than them, the only difference between them this person and that is that this person told themselves a better story. So it really comes down to if you're not satisfied with what you're sort of getting out of life, tell yourself a little bit better story, see where that takes you. In the end, the only thing that you have 100% control over is how you react to events that happen to you. So things are gonna happen to you uh, things happen to you before you were born. If you had the fortune of picking your parents, then you would be awesome, but none of us do. So none of us get to pick the hand that we're dealt. We just get a choice over how we play it or, or if we choose to just fold, right? And so that comes back to that idea of the stories that you tell yourself being true. Your goal in, in life should be to take the elements of the story that you have and construct the best story you possibly can. Figure out how to sort of navigate all the different things that happen to you and how to build a, a life story out of that that makes you satisfied with where you're at. Most of the time what I find is that when people who aren't satisfied with where they're at, you can normally trace it back to some event, something that happened outside of their control and they chose to incorporate that into their story in a way that's not serving them. So I think the, the first thing to come to terms with is that great ideas get rejected all the time. You can write a history of the world in mouse traps that weren't actually uh, worthy of beating a path to your door, or, or that maybe they were and people didn't do it. And so the first thing is to realize that you're in really good company. And the second thing is to realize that even if that person doesn't intend it, that criticism, that reaction is feedback. And your job is to tease out the elements of truth that you want to incorporate into that, figure out how to make that idea a little bit better while simultaneously realizing that some elements of it are a part of just this bias against new and different ideas. So the hard thing for the individual is when you get that reaction is to figure out what of this negative can I use, can I turn into a positive, and what of it do I just need to sort of dismiss and say I'm, I'm not interested in your feedback, you're just not a part of this. There's every element of criticism has some truth that we can learn from, but the majority of criticism is actually a, a bigger statement on the critic than it is the person trying to do it. The interesting thing about all of the great ideas that get rejected is they actually, if they really are great, they eventually get adopted somewhere. And they do that because somebody chose to, to push through, to take the little kernels of feedback to make it better, and eventually, thankfully, we have all of those things. You have no idea how much you're capable of because the minute you achieve something, you see what's next and what's out there. And you sort of ever grow and you can achieve stuff and do stuff that you didn't think sort of ever possible. I, I, jokingly told the, the audience that I always wanted to be a writer since I was 7 or 14 years old, somewhere in there. Which is true, but for a long time I told myself the story that no, that's not in the cards, this is what I'm going to do. And then when you begin to realize that you can do it, you start to see what's available for you. And you end up now, so I have one book and we're working on the next one and we're looking at what, what else is out there that you're possible of. And, and I'm confident by the end of it, I'll end up somewhere I had no idea I could have gone. And I think everyone's life is like that. So you're staring down a goal right now, and that's awesome, but when you hit that goal, there is proof that you can achieve way more than you thought. So figure out what's that next thing. Don't just stay there, don't just be satisfied. Always stay hungry.